Welcome back to the Super Coach Knife channel. Uh, a bit of an unexpected video here, but I guess it does serve a couple of purposes. Uh, the first one being, you might have noticed, there's now some uh, intros and outros on these videos. I've uh, been mucking around with some AI tools and a couple of different designs. So I uh, got a bit of feedback about the, the first one on the NBL Super Coach video. But if you've got any strong thoughts on the intro that appeared today or the previous one uh, feel free to throw them in the comment section love to hear back about it uh, but the second reason is we did do our round six review on Tuesday and off the back of that I have got a question about the break-evens and if there was anywhere where you could find them uh, and I had a bit of a look around and lo and behold I couldn't really find it anywhere as you can see with only uh, what have we got? 2,800 players playing. It's not the most popular game out there. So what I thought I'd do is take one for the team, this little community that we were building up here on the uh, Supercoach Enough channel, and I shelled out the, the 5 bucks a month or whatever it's going to be for the next few months so that we can uh, feature some break-evens. So we'll go in and we'll have a look at... Uh, I guess we'll start with my team and have a look at the break-evens as they stand. So uh, Josh Allen with quite a high break even of 70, um, you know, but we're not going to sell him. That's that's not the problem. You know, Jalen Hurts with 44 is fine. I guess the ones we probably want to look at are more the, the cheaper options. So like a Craig Reynolds with a negative four break even is pretty good. Um, Bijan, you can see his break even is pushing up towards his average. So he's probably topped out at price for the time being. Kyron Williams. Might be injured this week, but has a little bit of money left to make, so can hold on to him. Tyreek, you know, he's a break even or nine, so he's going to shoot up in price again. And uh, given he is already at the eighteen and a half mil mark, you know, that's a it's a bit of coin. Um, Chase still got a negative break even after his monster game a couple of weeks ago, so uh, there's still time if you wanted to get on him. Uh, yeah, other than that, you know, you can see Jordan Addison with a break even of one's pretty good. The Chicago Bears with a break even of negative eleven, that's uh that's pretty juicy. <laughs> so uh, get on that. But um we will have a look at all of the well not all of the break evens, but I guess you know the 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 main sort of hitters. So if we go by break even, so the uh the best break even I guess or the lowest break even if you want to describe it that way. Zach Moss with a negative 19. So, you know, he might have one more week of making money, but it looks like Taylor's going to sort of start to take over in that backfield. Um, and so I think if you've got Moss, you hold for a week, take the, uh, the cash that he makes, and then, you know, next week his break-even will probably uh, increase quite a lot and you'll want to uh, get out of that pick. Travis Etienne's got a nice break even. You know, he's been consistently rising. So, you know, if you're looking for a cheap keeper option, I think Etienne is your man in the running back spot. Tony Jones, so next time he steps out on the field, he'll make some money. But uh, with Alvin Kamara back, I can't imagine it'll be all that often. Uh, Desmond Ritter, so he's been throwing the ball a bit the last couple of games, so his price is on the way up. But uh, I don't think that's a long-term sustainable pick. I mean, if you want to do sideways Richardson to Ritter and ride the price rise, you certainly could. But uh, I think you'd be looking to make another trade down the track. A couple of defenses, the Seahawks and the Jets. So, you know, maybe if you're looking for somewhere to make some money, you could start streaming defenses. But with limited trades, I don't know if that's the best strategy. Brees Hall on the buy this week, but next week he could be a really good option with the negative break even. You know, it looks like he is the man there at the Jets now, so definitely one I'm keeping an eye on moving forward. Uh, Farrow Brown, a tight end from New England. So I only scored four last week, so he'll get one good price rise perhaps, and then uh, probably not worth the long-term investment. Uh, Jordan Mason, so it sounds like McCaffrey's actually 
a chance of playing this week. So it might be worthwhile just uh, yeah, holding off on the Mason pick. Um, Bryce Young's on a buy this week, but again, he could be one we trade for Richardson next week. We'll trade him in for Richardson, I should say. Cole Pitts, if you like Cole Pitts, he's done a lot the last couple of weeks. Uh, might start skipping a few here because they're probably somewhat less relevant. If O'Connell can get the, the QB1 job there at the Raiders, he could be a bit of value um, or could just be a, a pure cash-out option um, if you're looking to sort of go down the route of, of uh, not worrying about quarterbacks during their buys. Josh Downs, he's been an interesting one that probably got away from us a bit. He's at $6.2 million now. But it uh, looks like he's got a decent role there at the Colts. So it uh, could be worthwhile getting on. Uh, after that, Sam Howell, my guy. I, you know, I've talked about him previously. He's been a decent option at that cheaper price bracket. Dalton Schultz has been pretty good for the Texans. You know, particularly received that CJ Stroud rather looking quite good. Um, Rashi Ross, I think he was the uh, wide receiver that we had to get at Kansas City. You know, he hasn't been spectacular, you know, averaging 15. But, uh, you know, he's slow burning and actually looks like he could become the wide receiver one there. Uh, Craig Reynolds we've brought in, so I think that's okay. Don't know if it's a long-term play. Uh, Montgomery might only be out for one week. Uh, but we'll take that gamble, I think. HN, yeah, shame we lost him. You know, 11 million with a negative break even. So good. <laughs> I guess if we flip it the other way and potential trade out candidates, CMC at the top with a break even of 87. As I said, could be a chance to play this week, whether his minutes are limited or, or whatever might depend on the game situation. Um, but I can understand people trading out for the purpose of uh, trying to preserve some cash. Uh, Devontae Adams, so just is a bit out of sorts at the moment, so I would recommend that trade out. Um, Josh Allen, we've talked about, he's a keeper, not worth the stress of trading him out. Lamar, I guess if you bought him, probably as a keeper. Mike White with a negative two. How, how's he so expensive? <laughs> I guess he did play a few games for the Jets last year, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, shouldn't have him anyway. Um Jamal Williams is still injured, so that's fine. You shouldn't have him. The Dallas defense, so you could trade out, given they're on the buy this week, high break even. Um, but, you know, if you can play someone else in their spot, you can just hold to. Um, Patterson, yeah, he's not really featured there at Atlanta. He's not worthwhile mentioning. Jefferson's still out for a few weeks to so trade him. Chubbs out long term, trade him out. Uh, Keenan Allen, I didn't think he was that bad, but maybe just slightly overpriced. He has jumped up five million, so uh, probably a hold if you if you have him. Hold if you don't have him. Just uh, whatever you've got, stay the course on Keenan Allen. Uh, anything else of interest here at the top? Mahomes, Eckler. So. Most popular players as well, we can sort by that. So McCaffrey's the most popular, high break even. Bijan, you know, has peaked in price almost. Nakua, so last score of nine, break even of 35. So I think it is time to trade out Nakua. You know, it's uh, Cooper Cup's backfield now. Um, Nakua's still wide receiver too, but there's definitely more value at 12. And a bit million than uh than him at the moment. Jake Moody, most popular kicker, he's doing all right. No need to stress there. Kelsey, going okay. You know he's lost a bit, but he'll make that back in the coming weeks with a break even of nineteen. Zay Flowers, so break even of negative two. Still time to get on him, perhaps. Jordan Addison, we're on break even of one. Kyron Williams. You know, he's injured, but looks like once he's back here, will be the man. So if you can hold, would recommend. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, super slow burn. So, uh, yeah, 
I got rid of him. I uh, wouldn't blame others for doing so. Jordan Love, you know, it looks like he's slowly got a bit more money to make, but is getting up towards his peak price. So probably not worthwhile getting in. Calvin Ridley's been a bit up and down, but break even at 10, pretty solid. Mahomes, keeper, no more needs to be said there. Kincaid, you know, surprising he's popular. Uh, 15th most popular and uh, has done nothing. You know, you could have been on the Porter, um, even the likes of Jake Ferguson, Luke Musgrave around that price are probably better picks. Stefan Diggs, I think he's a keeper, so don't stress about break even. Aubrey, you know, he's made his money, so if you wanted to move on him, fair enough. Uh, yeah, so Laporta's still going good, break even a nine, a bit more money to be made. Madison, average at 20, suggests that maybe we, we don't worry about that pick. Pollard's on the buy. And again, a lot of these players are players we've already discussed. So, JSN, if you like him, you know, break even a four. He might not be too far off that breakout game. Uh, yeah. So, just thought I would uh, get on. Show we've got the uh, the break evens. Could probably do the trades as well. So this has been recorded at Thursday about three o'clock. So just under twenty four hours before the uh, um, what's it called? Blockout. Just had a complete blank there, and I've completely forgotten where they are. They're right here. So most popular trade outs. H N. Yep. Long term injury. Jefferson. On the IR, yep. Nakua, peak to price, yep. Williams, if he can hold, I'd say hold. Richardson, long term out, so yep. Pollard on the buy, I mean, uh, it depends who you bring him in for, but uh, I'd probably hold. McCaffrey, I think it's a hold. Um, you can see like the, the small numbers of people trading suggest that you know there's not big moves here. Um, Adams, yep, I would say trade out. Cowboys, potentially hold. Gabe Davis is an interesting one. Um, I mean, him to someone like a Zay Flowers, I'd say yes. Or if you go all the way down to a JSN, yes. Uh, if you're going to someone else in that price range, like a Ridley or a Lave, eh, probably not. Trade-ins, Cooper Cup, yes, Raheem Mostert. I think he's just about peaked in price. What's his break even? Oh, I've paid for it. Tell me what it is. <laughs> Not doing me. Yeah. I'll see if I can find him in the uh, section of the muster. There we go. So break even of eight. So he still has money to make. And uh, he is the man at the moment there at Miami. Tough game against Philly. Don't know how much uh, chance he'll get to run, but, uh, you know, might be okay. ETN, I do like, yep, trade in. Amonra, yeah, he's back to trade in. Keenan Allen, I did say hold, but obviously a few people are keen on bringing him in. Maybe for a Jefferson, maybe for um, Adams, if you've got the money to go up. I'd go Cooper Cup first, but if you've got him, Allen's not too bad. Jameson Williams, so I know he's only just come back a couple of games. Negative break even. So if you are looking for a cheapie, good option there. Uh, Kyron Williams, yeah, people bringing him in. So people trading him out, people bringing him in. I don't think that's the worst trade in, but uh, he might not play this week. So just be careful with that. Kamara, I don't mind. You know, a bit of a middle of the road sort of guy. Um, and I'm pretty sure the Dream Team scoring isn't PPR. So probably I'd I'd, uh, I'd rather Williams over Kamara. Um, rather Brees Hall than Kamara if you can wait a week. So uh, those are the sort of directions I'd go. Tyreek Hill, yep, get him in. Kenneth Walker's an interesting one. So he's peaked in price. Um, maybe because he's playing the Cardinals. I don't know. Is that a thing? But, uh, yeah, you know, he's not going to make you money. Obviously, the points are looking pretty good there, but uh, I think there might be better options. But that's just me. 
So yeah, so I guess yeah, we've covered trades, covered break evens. Um, any changes to my team? Uh, I guess with the news that that McCaffrey is a chance and Kyron Williams might miss, I think it's just switching them around. Um, I did go a bit cold on the Craig Reynolds trade, but I think I'm going to stick solid and try to go for that bump. Um, the question is just then, do I want to get out of one of these middling picks to bring in one of those cheap options that we've looked at? Uh, I can't really decide at the moment. <laughs> what we got? We got one and a half in the bank. I'm trying to remember what trades we did do now. Undo changes. So yeah, bought Cooper Cup, you know, I think that's the right move. Craig Reynolds, yeah, maybe not. Let's just have a play around with it. So update the trade. So we'll put we'll plug Ford back in. I mean it'll probably be Bijan in that spot. But what if we boost? And we go up and down on, let's say, Davis and Ridley. All right, and so the cheap options, we've got to decide between uh, Williams, Jameson Williams, and uh, Zay Flail. Oh, no, Zay Flail was the more expensive option, wasn't he? What was the other super cheap option we looked at? Jameson Williams and someone else. Maybe not. Oh, JSN, that's the one. So I think if we will pick them between them, I think the obvious choice is Jameson Williams. Um, Detroit's offense is going well, you know, and he's probably the, the wide receiver two after Monra. So we could do that. And then we could upgrade to maybe someone like a Zay Flowers with a few mil to spare. Uh, what else we got in that sort of price range? What if we sort by price? Uh, so anything after a Murray Cooper, cool. Ayuk, yeah. Yeah, it's all sort of, Jacoby Myers has got a nice break even, but and against Chicago. But I guess without Jimmy G, it would be a risk. Jalen Waddle may have sort of bottomed out in price, so that's an interesting one. Watson, Pickens, actually, I think he'd be fairly low on the price list. Just make sure I'm not missing anyone obvious as we go through here. T. Higgins, if he wasn't on the buy, I'd think about. His price is almost right. Debo had a flat game. He might be worthwhile bringing in, particularly if McCaffrey's a bit off. But the player I just thought about might be a nice option. Deontay Johnson. So he does have another week before his price changes, so we might have a look at that actually. He might become an option for a larvae if he pops off. But uh, I am leaning towards flowers at this point. I mean, the alternative, if we go back through, uh, where was I to? I forgot before I sort of got on the uh, Deontay Johnson track. Tyler Lockett, you know, and I guess, yeah, you, you're just waiting for those sort of games where they're going to go off. You know, maybe the likes of Garrett Wilson might have a good run. T. Higgins, like we said. I do like Debo. I think Drake London, you know, he's got a break even or two, but I don't think he's got that much more cash in him. So, I mean, Devonta's starting to get to a good price. You know, you could sideways Davis to Smith. I think that would be a, a nice trade, even though it looks sideways. Um, yeah. Cool. But, yeah, I think, yeah, the more I think about it, I think because Craig Reynolds is a short-term sort of deal, whereas Williams and Flowers are going to serve us for the, the longer term. So... We'll update that. We're burning through the trades, but that's all right. It's all about putting together a, a decent final squad. Um, and I think, you know, these moves are 
downgrading those guys for some cash makers will help facilitate that. So we'll play Bijan this week. Ford can sit on the bench. Although who's Cleveland got? The Colts. Eh, might get a bit of action. But I guess the reason why we traded him out was because Cream Hunt taking up the touchdown upside. Um, so yeah, do so we play or keep these guys? They're playing against each other, so that's interesting. Uh, Minnesota against San Fran. I think that's why we, we benched Addison. But I think, you know, in case of emergency, he'd be fine as a as a replacement. Cool. So uh, that's the the updated team. So, uh, yeah, as always, if you've got any comments about the team, about the, the new intros and, and outros, feel free to throw them in the uh, comment section below this video. If you are enjoying all the fantasy content, remember to like the videos, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the rest of it. And other than that, it's uh, time to hit the outro. <laughs>